So let's talk about bevels. So this is a new type tool added in 2020. Is you, you go ahead and select your object and you can scroll down and you have this little bevel option here. I'm going to go ahead and toggle this on and it's going to add a bevel. And there's a lot of different bevel effects that you can do. You have kind of a classic one. And if you've done layering styles in Photoshop, these are very, very, very similar. You have more of a smooth round look. So it almost looks like this nice smooth edge. You have convex step. You can kind of cycle through these. You can see how this one almost gives kind of a border, which looks really cool when you do like a metallic border and square. So for this one, we can do a couple of different ones just to have different looks. You can change the width so it's not as prominent. You can make it super prominent. You can make it just a subtle bevel. You can change the angles to make it come out or make it come in. I did a lot of this stuff with my 2021 graphic I showed you earlier. You can even repeat the bevel so you can have two and three and four and make it really detailed. You can even change the space, which matters when you have more than one bevel. You can add space between the bevels like this. So that's super neat. So let's go ahead and I'm just have the move tool. I'm going to select the O or the zero and let's add a bevel on this one too. Let's do a different one. I like the round look. Um, so I can change the width. So let's move on to number two, the second number two. Let's can maybe do a classic bevel and change it. That's going to really push it out, isn't it, right here? So look at that. It's flat, and then it pushes out as I change the angle. Kind of pushes it. So let's do that. That's interesting. Adding the repeat adds all those little different layers. And let's make it more space between the two. Okay, now let's make this one smooth since those are both sharp. Let's make those smooth let's do a nice round let's do a round outline or we already have a lot of outlines going so let's just do another round just like that so that looks great so a couple things we need to do we need to put this on a background because right now it's literally just floating on white so i like to put a material around it similar to that almost like a photo box like i showed you before just to put it on something so we're going to go we're going to go ahead and zoom out we're going to zoom out, which is basically our dolly tool, and we're going to whoop, zoom out and we're going to orbit around so we can go ahead and get this into a box. So let's, we can do that by creating a couple of planes. So we could put this on a surface. This is our plane and we can of course scale this, make it bigger. And we can build like our own little box around it and do different materials. Or sometimes like a quicker way to do it is I like to use the cube. So I'm going to go down. All these come free with Adobe Dimensions and I have this hollow cube. I'm going to bring in the hollow cube and I'm going to fit all this inside. So I'm going to need to make this a lot bigger, scale it, and then I'm going to rotate it and kind of be able to put all this in a box. Just kind of, it's just super quick to do. It may not be the most efficient way, but you know, it works. Let's scale it so you don't block too much light from the global lighting, which we'll get to in a sec. I know this is a lot if you haven't ever been in dimensions. Dolly out and then just continuing to make adjustments to this. And there we go. So we've got the whole box here. Let's take our numbers. We're going to have to dolly right back in. And then we are going to have to take all of these little objects here. So let's just hold down shift and select all of our objects. You can even go up to object and group all these so you can keep these as one kind of object. And now we can kind of put it in the space. So now it's somewhere, it's not just floating around. And so I'm just taking the camera tool, kind of getting the right cropping for a presentation. Now the only thing missing, and let's take our little box here, and I can rotate this box and give it any kind of angle, just like that. Oops. So now what's really gonna make this come to life is the material and the lighting. 
So let's get to materials. We have, we're here in our starter assets. We're going to go all the way down to materials. Uh, there's a lot of materials we can use that are all free, that are already loaded with Adobe Dimensions. We have coppers and golds and marbles and wood and all sorts of different things. And at this point, when I get to materials, I like to do pre-rendering. So pre-rendering is a kind of a new option to Adobe Dimensions within the last year, but you have a, um, a render preview right up here. I'm going to go ahead and put it on. It takes up a lot of computer resources. So this is when your computer might slow down a tiny bit. Mine does okay. Um, but you can kind of see what it'll look like when it renders. So when you, you could toggle it on and off. So if you want to really do major movement and moving in the camera, you might want to have it off. But if you're ready for materials and to really see how the lighting looks, I would suggest um, putting on your rendering. So that's before. And then here's a pre-render. You can really see how the lighting and everything is going to look. And it takes a couple seconds for it to kind of work. But um, that kind of already looks a lot better when you render it. <laughs> so you're not in preview mode. So now when we drag in materials like ice, we can just drag that right onto our number and we can change it to, to look like ice. And you can see how it's kind of showing through those different materials. Of course, the, this box, this inside of the box can change too. Uh, we can bring a glossy, which is kind of one of my favorite kind of default um, looks here. Glossy, it's gonna be shiny. It's going to reflect light a little bit better. You can also do like a black box. So all this is going to affect your lighting and how things look. So the black box is really going to let that glass look through. You could do uh, lots of different, I mean, there's just so many different things you can do. What's really neat about Adobe Dimensions is you can apply different materials on the same type character. So we can put a different material on the front, a different material on the back. So let's say we have this, this is all glass. And so what we did is we dragged the frosted glass right over on the number two and it became frosted glass, which is really cool looking, but we can even add a back to this. So it can be incredibly complex. So for example, the one that I did, I had kind of a glass inside and a back, but I had kind of a gold outside or they call it the bevel. And so you can kind of make a really dynamic characters. So let's say I want to add a gold bevel to this. So all I did is I selected the object, went over to, to so this is kind of like your layers panel. So this is text two. So let's go ahead and just title this uh, the first two. So we just know which one it is. It has a little arrow here. This is where you can edit a lot of the characteristics of the character. And you have four different sides. You have the bevels, you have the back, you have the face, which is the front and the sides. So let's say I want to add a different material to the sides of the two. I can bring in brass and instead of dragging it on top, I'm going to drag it right over here to the side and it's going to change it. And it added kind of gold on the sides, which makes it super cool. We can even, we can have a glass front. So let's go back through, click on the arrow. We have a, we have all this is glass right now. So what if we on the back had some kind of brass? So you could see the back through the glass. So it'll be glass on the front and brass on the back. So really interesting things you can do. We can even do ice. Let's do ice on this too. And let's change the bevel. So I'm right here on text. So this one is gonna be the second two. Go ahead and label our layers so we kind of know what's going on. Click on the arrow. We have our four different sides here. So let's do, we need to do wood. Let's do wood on the bevels. So see how it added wood right there on the bevels? It makes it a really interesting kind of look. Of course, you, know, you can always change that if you don't like it. Maybe do something kind of shiny. I think they have, I think I put copper. It's kind of like a dark copper look. Bring that over to the bevels. And that's going to put copper in the bevels now. And of course, it gets really complicated. Once again, I could spend hours in Adobe Dimensions, but each one of these has a uh, different roughness. So if I increase the roughness, it's going to make it more dull. If I decrease it, it's going to make it more uh, reflective of the light around in the environment. And go back out. And if you click on the main layer, instead of going into kind of 
the extra options and you just have this selected, you go down here and that's how you kind of edit what we did before. But we're going to go in here and instead of copper, hmm, maybe a silver. So you can edit the individual. If you just drag it right onto the character, it's going to just do the entire character, that one material. So let's, you can even change colors. So let's do, let's go up and do glossy. It's kind of like a plastic look. So I'm going to bring glossy on number one, the second one. So that's going to make it kind of shiny and glossy. And you can change the color very easily by selecting. And right here, I just have this text for, I'm not going into the extra options, I am just have here, right here, text for. I'm going to go down to this little area right here. This is called the select material. I'm going to go ahead and click it. Some allow you to change the color, the materials, and some do not. Um, this one, the glossy, allows you to change the color, so I'm just going to click on color. Let's say I want to do like a bright yellow, I can do a bright yellow, and there is a cool bright yellow look which looks really good on the black and once again I can go in and add a material to this so if I wanted to add a material to the side I can bring in this dark material to the side so think of all the different combinations you have that you can create stuff with so let's do the O let's do the O something different hmm we can do this clean gold look. Of course, we already kind of have a gold on the zero, so we want to have, you know, don't want to have all that blend in. But what I love about Adobe Dimensions and the, is this is just a pre-render, so it's going to look a lot better when we do the full render because it's a little blurry. See how it kind of looks blurry? It renders out much more smoothly when you have, give your computer 20 minutes to render it. Um, but I love how, see how the gold reflects in the two? and it bounces off the O, the O right here. I just like how all these interact. And that's when you can change kind of the position of these, kind of see how things interact. What I like is you can actually have it cover up. They See how they're fused together right there? You can leave it that way, and it even looks like they are fused together. It kind of gives it a really interesting look. So we can change the position of these Let's bring that back. Let's see. And that one, that Z axis is a little bit hard to see, but you can have this kind of go halfway in. And same thing with this. And look, you can even see kind of through, because that one has kind of a glass look to it. But, you know, you can get really complicated with this if you wanted to. And let's change the material to two. Let's do a different color with this. Let's do the glossy on number two, and let's change the color. So I'm going to go back and change it to like a pink or a blue or a blue. There we go. So that'll come out interesting in the pre-render. And you can change your camera angle at any time. You can change your background box there to be any mater material you'd like. So I just wanted to kind of demonstrate this quickly, you know, you can spend a couple hours really learning, spend a good day learning Adobe Dimension so you can create some really interesting effects. It's really about playing around with the different materials, the lighting, we didn't even get touch on lighting too much. Um, you could t change the light, this is just the default lighting, but you can go into the environment and you can change the environment lighting too. So you can make it more intense you can do the rotation of the light. Of course, there's different lights than just the default one. You can bring in your own lights. It's, so you have different angles of where the, the light, lighting source is coming from. So all that has a big effect on how the, the text looks as well, especially when you have shiny materials. Sometimes the lighting and the way it reflects uh, really changes. So you can see how the O looks really cool there. We can take these three and we can get the sampler tool, sample that gold. We can take the two, I'm just sampling, I'm just taking this little eyedropper tool, sampler tool, and I'm going to just make all these gold, just for the fun of it. Just getting a sampler tool, making it the same material, and just like that we have this cool kind of gold look. 
Um, if you don't want it to be super shiny and you want to have a more matte finish, you know we talked about design trends, how more of a matte finish looks really good. Um, let's say, let's go ahead and tech, uh, select this too. Go into our options and you have these properties down here and you can increase the roughness. So when you increase the roughness, you're taking away that metallic shiny look and you're making it more matte. So increase the roughness. You, of course, there's patinas, if you know about how metallic, yeah, add like a patina. See how it automatically kind of dulls it a little bit? So if you're wanting kind of a more dull shine and you don't have so much reflection, which can kind of make everything look over-processed sometimes, um, you can do that too. I wanted to show you how to render. So let's say I have this ready to go. I want to render it. I have this pre-render on. I can go ahead and select that off. You can kind of see what it looks like. And then here's the pre-render. Let's do a final render, and this takes some time. So we can go click over here to render. So right now I'm in design mode, and you can click over to render, and you can render this high, which is the, the best resolution and setting, or quality, I guess you can say, because it's all gonna be the same resolution. If you want a really high quality, it's gonna take a long time to render. This would probably take about 45 minutes. I usually like doing medium because I'm pretty happy with medium quality. It depends on what you're rendering this for. If you're going to do a big poster that you're going to print, you probably want to take the time to do high. But in this case, I'm going to do medium. I like to have a PNG of it and I love to have a Photoshop file because you can go in to Photoshop and do some edits on it. So let's go ahead and render. We're going to render this and we can I always bring it into Photoshop because I love Adobe Dimensions but sometimes I really want to bring out highlights and shadows and, and, and a little bit more saturation and intensity um, so I like to bring it into Photoshop and just add that using dodge and burn and some other kind of tools to help like really bring out colors a little bit better and to sharpen it so it almost always needs to be edited in Photoshop to have a polished look so we're gonna do that really quickly with this and then I'll last thing I'll do is I'll show you how you know, I kind of put together the typography poster.